this summer. Join me as I figure out which cup to drink my coffee in. There is just too many choices. Rated PG-13. That's good. Hi, what's up everybody? My name's Andrew Russell. Welcome to the next installation of my How to Become a Voice Actor series. We're gonna be talking about the different genres of voice acting and how you need to be finding your niche in one of them when you're first starting out in the business. And for your convenience, I put the timestamps for each genre in the description. I can't stress how important it is in finding specificity for yourself and where you fit in in the voiceover world. Now, yes, as you grow and you have more experience in voice acting, you're going to be able to shift through and bounce between genres a lot. But when you're first starting out, really focusing and honing in on your craft in one specific area will help you grow so much faster. Just find something that you connect to and then consume yourself in it. Good coffee. Let's begin. Commercial. Commercial voiceover is everywhere. And it's pretty much anything that's selling you a product or advertising something to you in some specific way. At Best Buy, you can get an all new Samsung TV for $14.99. You know, that sort of stuff. Even if you're not interested in commercial, you should have a commercial demo. So start really paying attention to commercials everywhere they are. The next one, one of my favorites and probably everybody else's favorite too, is animation. Oh man, Rick, not this again. Shut up, Morty. We're just gonna have to figure this one out. Everybody and their mom wants to become a animation voice actor, so we're just gonna have to find our niche in some other way. Okay, that makes sense. Pretty much everybody wants to do animation. And pretty much everybody who's doing it has been doing it for a long time. Good news, everyone. Uh, uh, bad news. Animation is highly sought after, but very difficult to get into. That's not to say that there isn't work. There's plenty of work for you to do out there, but it's going to be a little bit harder to get into when you're first starting. So the best thing for you to do is to start practicing. Again, start really consuming yourself with animation. Start listening to these characters, but instead of listening to the voices that they're doing, think about why their voices work. Why does the character work the way it does? Why was this person chosen for this job? What makes their character stand out? Lots of little things. We'll get into the details of it later on, but for now, it's a good place to start. Next, let's talk about audiobooks. The captain conceals the Jade Key in a dwelling long neglected, but you can only blow the whistle once the trophies are all collected. In an audiobook, generally speaking, the characterization is not going to be over the top like that. Audiobooks are a lot of fun. They're a lot of work because you gotta read this entire thing. Also, while I'm talking about all these things, I want you guys to keep in mind the difference in characterization between something like an animation, something like a video game, and something like an audiobook going to be much more in the tone of your regular voice. So something like, his name appeared on the scoreboard in third place. I'm not going to read you this whole book, but it's a good one. You can actually get started right now auditioning for audiobooks for free at acx.com. You can go and make an account, put up some samples of you reading, and try to get into some books. So go do that. The link's down below. And also when you're auditioning, don't forget to use a blanket like we uh, talked about in the last video. That product is a blanket. That went well. Next is yet another one of my favorites, video games. This is Sergeant Andrew Russell reporting for duty. It seems like there's a cute cuddly dog attached to my arms and I can't seem to shake it. I'm gonna need some backup. Uh, this is Sergeant Andrew Russell checking in again. Uh, uh, cuteness overload. Cancel my last request. She's so cute. Video games can be the most authentic form of acting performance within the voice acting world. You have to develop a character, you have to think the thoughts of the character, you have to put yourself in the situation that's really heightened and really intense sometimes and you have to go there. Oftentimes you'll have to scream a lot, yell a lot, do a lot of deaths and jumping off buildings and catching on fire and getting shot and getting punched and all these things. So the most important thing is you need to be able to sustain that for a long period of time. Video games are just so much fun. Moving on to the next one, e-learnings and whiteboard animations. You ever been at work at some sort of retail job and you have to watch those e-learnings where they have some guy that's like, you are part of the team. 
That's why we're taking this minute to sit down and talk about making our teamwork a dream work. Yeah, e-learnings are a thing. Whiteboard animations are really huge in the world of voiceover and you might not even know what that is. There's a lot of companies out there that make whiteboard animations like this that generally these talk about a product or something that's coming out soon and they need a voiceover to talk over all of it and somebody's getting paid to do that. Now, the last one I'm gonna talk about today, but certainly not the least, is dubbing or ADR. To dub correctly, there's a lot of things you have to keep in mind. And I really am going to dive into this in detail in the dubbing video that I make. Some things to keep in mind for now, you have to have really good timing, you have to be really good at sight reading, you also have to be ready for any changes at any instance because sometimes the translation from a different country doesn't quite work, so they have to change the script on the spot. And on top of it all, you have to match the flaps of the mouth of whoever you're dubbing. And oftentimes that's hard to do, so you gotta kinda get as close as you can. This doesn't just go for cartoons and animation. I've done a variety of different Netflix and Amazon original series where I dubbed over movies or TV shows. This is a series on Netflix called 3%. There's me. Was you not to tell anyone? What's that got to do with me? Now I have no more shell, no more process, no more nothing. <laughs> Oof. So dramatic. In my experience out here in Los Angeles, these are kind of the most common genres of voiceover, but the whole point of this video is I want you to have a taste of what each genre is. What you need to do now is really start to focus on which one you fit into. You'll be able to do multiple genres later on, but for now it's best to just start with one. If you guys like this video and you found it helpful, please like, subscribe, share it with your friends, comment down below, ask questions, whatever. Do it all! So now that you're thinking about it, let's answer some questions from last week. Kini Group 5 asks if I can talk about uh, lip sync because it's mostly a very important thing when you're dubbing international things. So a good way to start practicing your lip sync now, start watching animations or animes that have subtitles, mute the TV, and start doing the voices to them yourselves. You need to learn how to time the words with the flaps of the character's mouth on the screen. It's not always going to match up, but if you start practicing the timing, the only way to get better at lip sync is by practicing it a lot. And then eventually you'll get paid to do it. Haruto asks, how do you portray different characters without losing your natural speaking voice? For example, transitioning between a bubbly character to a serious, much more deep voice kind of character without sounding fake or forcing it too much that sounds fake. Like I said in the first video, you gotta start recording yourself. The only way that you're going to really start having these natural sounding characters is if you're really listening to yourself and then getting feedback from other people too. More often than not, you'll record one character at a time, but sometimes you'll have to switch right back and forth between them. Develop a character thought or something that triggers you into the mindset of each individual character. So if I'm talking up here for a character, I really understand that the placement's up here. I could feel it in my voice. The muscle memory in me knows. But if I have another character that's down here all the time, you just gotta remember how that feels. It's a matter of muscle memory and it's a matter of practice. So, get practicing. Thanks for watching this one, you guys. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Sir! The dog's got an underbite! I don't care if the dog has an underbite. You cuddle that dog until you are done with your duty. Hey, if he can't handle it, I'll take it on. I've cuddled more dogs in my lifetime than I care to admit. We're all gonna have to cuddle dogs today. I have won! I win everything!